Now, welcome back. Now, still staying with the capital markets, the president of the Association of Asian Houses of Nigeria, Chuka Eseka, has called on government to create a enabling framework for the private sector to thrive. He also added uh, that government should create more market incentives to encourage listings and come out with a pronouncement on VAT on capital market products. All we need is the right enabling and uh, the right enabling framework. Government taking the lead and private sector coming to follow on. The amount of investment the telco sectors collectively invest in one year, I'm sure it's probably the amount government invested in Nitel from the 60s to the 80s. So that's what private enterprise can do with the right partnership with government. And that's what we're seeking to repl replicate in every other sector. It can be done in the private sector. Once we, once we make sure that the power sector value chain is bankable, it can be done. It can be done in the transportation sector. Because we have the economic fundamentals we have the, and we have the population. So our message is to government as a new economic team or a new cabinet of urgency, a sense of urgency in doing the right things now. And in the meantime, the Central Bank of Nigeria has injected the sum of $210 million into the interbank foreign exchange market after the transactions on Tuesday, the 30th of July. The bank's director of corporate communications department, Isaac Okorafo, made this known in a statement in Abuja. Mr. Okorafo explained that authorized dealers in the wholesale sector of the market received $100 million, while the small and medium enterprises, as well as uh, the invisible segments, were allocated the sum of $55 million each. And the President Mamadou Buhari has met with the leadership of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, assuring them of the federal government's support. At the State House meeting, the President said he will collaborate with Lagos State Government to reduce the persistent gridlock in Upper Paralysis, which has posed a serious challenge for businesses in the area. According to him, the recently signed Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement Treaty is both an opportunity and a threat to the country as the rules can be subjected to abuse. And the group managing director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Meli Kiari, says President Mohamed Buhari is determined to sign the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill into law. Mr. Kiari who stated this when the Nigerian Guild of Editors paid him a courtesy visit in Abuja, said the passage of the bill would, to a large extent, address issues around the fiscal environment in the oil and gas industry. Now, business correspondent Chinemelem Joseph reports. The federal government had long pledged its intention to overhaul the petroleum industry to entrench efficiency and transparency in both the upstream and downstream sectors. Yet, the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, which seeks to increase government's revenue from oil and lay down a strengthened legal and regulatory framework, has continued to suffer delays. At this courtesy visit, where the NMPC GMD, Milikiari, received a delegation from the Nigerian Guild of Editors, he reiterated President Buhari's commitment to sanitizing the industry through proper legislation. Petroleum legislation efforts have been lingering since 1999. We are not able to cross it. And I'm aware, but on a very strong footing, that this government is determined to make this legislation work. The visitors, led by the president, Funke Egbemode, are here to seek more collaboration with the country's oil manager. To ensure that um, we provide um, the platforms because we represent the entire media industry and the leaders of the newsroom. And to also ensure that we critique them, we tell them when they're not doing well, that way they start doing better. The GMD appreciates the visit and says both organizations have a role to play in creating a good image for the corporation. When we get wrong, please tell us. And support us to do the right things. And the combination of the two will make sure that NMPC delivers to its shareholders. And we'll engage you, you know, on a very regular basis. And we're going to set up a framework of engagement so that we can understand where we are going. Kiari promised that the corporation's door will remain open to all as transparency and accountability will remain his watchword. And experts in the Nigerian banking industry have urged field professionals to display exemplary ethical conduct 
in the management of personal information and act as shining beacons to their industry. Now, they said data management and protection issues uh, should be of great concern to professionals in the industry as breaches in data protection guidelines and laws have resulted to money laundering and identity fraud. Speaking at the breakfast session in Lagos, President of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria, CIBN, Uche Olo, said, given the sensitivity of data warehoused by the industry, professionals must adhere to and exhibit ethical conduct, adding that consent fatigue has become an issue consumers face and needed urgent attention. Now, still staying with the issues around ethics, the National Institute of Marketing Nigeria is to come up with uh, a comprehensive document on ethics for the sector. And this, they say, is for sustainability of marketing in Nigeria. Now, President of the Institute gave the announcement at the Institute's awards event held in Lagos. Now, speaking further on ethics and sustainability in the marketing industry, experts are calling on players to begin to think long term. So if you're thinking long term and it's, it's an organization that's built to last, then you must do things right. In marketing, there are certain codes and ethics you must follow. You can't take uh, shortcuts. You cannot deceive the consumer. You cannot, uh, you know, I mean, I've seen organizations that try to do it and their end is uh, predictable. So for me, uh, the question of ethics is very, very important. And we're going to drive it forcefully, like I said. Uh, by the end of the year, we're going to come out with a comprehensive code, which we're going to discuss across industry and have an agreement, and it will be gazetted, and that's it. We're not going to enjoy a brand. The brand will come when all Nigerians commit that this is an ideal, where we want to be, where we want to go to, and we're committed to doing those things that will paint the right image for Nigeria internally and externally. And we can't just talk about building the brand externally. The branding will start from the inside when all Nigerians commit to doing the right things all the time to give the right image to our country, Nigeria. And the microfinance banks industry in Nigeria recorded a 5.2% decline in non-performing loans, which is also known as bad loans, to 25 billion naira in 2018 from 26.18 billion naira in 2017. The industry, however, struggled in terms of profitability as profits before tax stagnated at 16.2 billion naira during the year. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, disclosed this in its 2018 annual report, which stated that the microfinance bank's subsector had a gross income of 105 billion naira as of December 30, 2018, against 89.63 billion naira in 2017. And the Standard Organization of Nigeria Sun has seized a 40 foot container stocked with substandard liquefied petroleum gas, LPG, also known as cooking gas cylinders, worth over 38 million naira. The Director General's son, Osita Aboloma, said that the cylinders failed to meet the safety requirements and as such pose a threat to human lives and property in the country. He stressed the need to adhere strictly to standards when dealing with LPG cylinders, adding that it was highly dangerous to use cylinders of higher capacities like 12.5 kg and above as camping gas where burners are fitted on top of the cylinder. Yes, pretty advisory uh, from the Standard Organization of Nigeria. And it's on that note we say thank you for staying with us on today's business. I'm David Barbadiketela. Come your way again next week. Do have yourself a profitable business day. Bye for now.